This week, we take you to the tourist mecca that is Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Lots of mini golf playing, uh, the Hollywood Wax Museum, lots of restaurants and beaches, of course, and a whole lot more. This is RV Miles. RV Miles is sponsored by L.L. Bean, dedicated to helping you experience all the benefits of time outside and stay more comfortable while you're out there. From soft and breathable activewear designed to do it all, to just right layers perfect for changing weather, to sun smart clothing that blocks the sun's harmful rays, every L.L. Bean product is made with comfortable time outside in mind. Visit LLBean.com to shop now. L.L. Bean. Be an outsider. Welcome to episode 199 of RV Miles. I'm Jason. And I'm Abby. And we are two full-time travelers who, along with our boys, Jack, Ethan, and Henry, are crisscrossing North America on one epic road trip. Each week, we talk all things RV and outdoors, from travel destinations to gear, industry news, our national parks, and a whole lot more. One episode away from the big 200. We're very excited about that. We've got some special things plan for that episode. We are coming to you this week from the Dayton, Ohio KOA, which is a lovely campground, a uh, lovely family atmosphere, with the pool with the, the, with the, the, with the thing with that they do now where they do I don't know. <laughs> the, the mineral, the, the, the gems, mining. the gem mining thing. Lots of campgrounds have the gem mining thing Yeah, that's really popular now. It's taking the place of mini golf, it feels like, (laughs) a little bit. Bring back the mini golf. Ice cream as big as your head for three bucks. It's a great place, but there are cicadas everywhere. Oh, my gosh. It's so loud. (laughs) There are so many. The trees are covered, and I had to go somewhere today in the truck, and they just keep flying into the windshield. And they're not like tiny little splats. It's like, and then the whole... I can't talk about it. Never mind. So Let's just move on. Normally, we like to record the RV Miles podcast outdoors, but today we're recording inside because because of the noise of the cicadas. It sounds like it sounds like a billion baby rattles shaking all at the same time. <laughs> it's incredible. They are starting to wane though a little bit. A little bit. And in order to record inside, we have to turn the air conditioning off inside. (laughs) And it's summer in Ohio. So as this episode progresses, if you're watching it, we're going to glow. We're going to melt. We are going to have a massive glow up during this episode (laughs) because I'm already very, very hot and we're only like five minutes in. Hey, if you didn't check out our recent uh, episode, our news episode uh, that came out over the weekend, we talked about the purchase of Boondockers Welcome by the folks over at Harvest Host. So I wanted to talk about that a little bit more because it's got a lot of people questioning, are there going to be changes at Boondockers Welcome and, and what that's what that's going to be like? Because Everyone's buzzing like the cicadas about it. <laughs> you, 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 were, you were holding, I could see in your eye, you were holding on to that for <laughs> a good minute there. You're like, I'm going to say it. I didn't want to interrupt you, so I was waiting for like the <laughs> perfect moment to drop that. <laughs> no, Harvest Host was bought a few years ago uh, Joel Holland is the CEO, friend of the show. He's been on the show. And th- the price of Harvest Hosts went up very, very quickly. And uh, that turned some people off, I think. But I, I do think Harvest Hosts really made good on on making that investment by all their members into something. There are now over 2,000 Harvest Hosts locations across the country, and they have all the golf courses now. It's it's really kind of incredible how they've grown harvest host and the price does go up annually but they lock you into your rate if you don't let your subscription lapse your rate stays the same as as long as you have it and they offer like numerous 15 percent discounts i think we're going to see a lot of the same harvest i mean boondockers welcome already does that kind of and i think we're going to see a lot of the same of that happening with Boondockers Welcome. Yeah, and Boondockers Welcome has had a price increase since we first encountered them, what, three, almost four years ago, actually. I mean, I think we kind of met them right as they were really starting to push into the market or starting to become a little bit more well-known. And they've had a price increase, too. I mean, it just, it happens, Mm -hmm. a couple, and it happens. And I can't say that that it's going to happen again for Boondockers Welcome, you know, maybe not this year, 
But it is going to happen, and it would have happened regardless if Harvest well, Hosts owned it or not. This method of <laughs> of increasing the rate every year, offering 15% discounts through, like, everywhere. And There's then... nowhere you can go right now that does not have a 15% discount to Harvest Host. Everyone's got one. And, and Your grandma has one. And for, like, the month before they up the rate, they put press releases out. They let everybody know yeah. the rate's going up. And then if you sign on, that you lock in that rate. That has been very, very, very successful for Harvest Hosts to do that. And I think it's good for the customers, too, because your rate does remain locked in, which is awesome. Uh, so I definitely think we'll see a lot more of that with Boondockers Welcome. And I think we'll probably see some sort of tiered membership where you can get both at a discount. So that's probably good, too. Um, but Who knows? I, I think it, it's... Uh, Boondockers Welcome is such a great community, and mm -hmm. we've loved being a part of it. We've loved at staying at the Boondockers Welcome places that we stayed at because it's it's people offering their land for free. They get no benefit from it. Like Harvest hosts those wineries and farms and such. They get customers. That's the whole idea for well, them. I would argue, though, that Boondockers Welcome hosts get a lot from it. They get community and they well, get sure, to yes. meet other I'm, RVers. They don't get a monetary. Yeah, they get to be free members of Boondockers yes. Welcome, but they don't get any sort of remuneration. It's not it, it is. But it is from the goodness of their heart that they mm -hmm. do it is, is my point, I guess. And uh, you know that uh, that's always going to be the heart of what Boondockers Welcome is. It won't work otherwise. So they'll certainly keep that. And I think you know the amount of money that Harvest Hosts has, the capital they have, the ability to invest in technology, will only improve both of these platforms mm -hmm. as apps and communities. We shall see. It's only been like forty-eight hours, so everybody, <laughs> slow your roll. <laughs> uh, you know, we we've had a conversation with Joel Holland uh, since the since the they purchased Boondockers Welcome, and he seems like he very much is is just wanting to bring that community together with Harvest Hosts because they do such similar things, though in entirely different ways. And it, you know, I don't think there's they're not going to merge together or anything like that. They are still going to remain separate entities so all right we've got a question uh, a, a question from a facebook group member tana who said i've ordered a blackstone griddle for our rv can i use the propane line that was for our gas grill that came with our rv or do i need an adapter <laughs> This is. <laughs> I like how you start that with a giggle. Because I get so annoyed by this. Okay, so a lot of manufacturers put these quick connect propane um, places on your RV, near outdoor kitchen or wherever, so where you can connect your propane grill of any sorts, whether it's a Blackstone or a grill, and, and use it. The problem is, if you get a hose to connect to most of the grills or Blackstone griddles or whatever it is that you purchase at the store, you are now regulating that propane twice. There's a regulator on your, your main propane bottles in your RV, and then there's a regulator on the grill itself, which means you're going to get a very, very low flame. So in order to use your Blackstone, um, what you have to do is get a special hose that connects that quick connect to your Blackstone griddle, or it will do it with like a Coleman road trip grill or anything like that without using the regulator on that grill. So you pull the regulator off and you attach just the hose straight into it, which can sound a little bit scary because propane needs to be regulated so it doesn't just, you know, shoot out and make giant flames. Yes. But you have that regulator on the front of your RV for this reason. So uh, there is a product, and it's hard to find this product. Like you can't find it in like Walmart next to the, all the, the whole wall of Blackstone stuff that they have at Walmart. You, uh, the, we've found it on Amazon and I'll put a link to it in the, in the show notes um, for the one we have. But if you have a quick connect on your RV like that and you have a Blackstone griddle or another propane grill, I highly recommend you get one because the propane that you're putting into your propane bottles on your RV is so much cheaper than those little one pound bottles. Yeah. And they are so bad for the environment. Yeah, that's really the selling point for us to go through all of this and search out for that hose or sorry, I was listening, but 50% of me wasn't listening because <laughs> it's so hot. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes, I'm like, it's a hose. You're right. 
I I'm said literally hose. glazing over because it's so hot. And anyway, the yes, big... it's, it's up to like seventy-eight degrees oh, in your room. I look. It's you know, it's hot sitting next to you. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's your gift for $199, okay. 199 episodes. But anyway, our biggest reason for wanting to do that was because those tiny propane bottles are really bad for the environment. And there are so many of them used year after year. So if you can stop using those, please do. They cannot be recycled. No. They will not. You can throw them in the recycling all you want, but they will not recycle them because they don't want them exploding on themselves when they recycle them. So they, they just go into the landfill hole like that. And it's crazy. You can see it. Yellow, Yellowstone has put press releases mm. out about this before, about the just tons and tons of garbage that those little green one pound propane bottles put out. And let me say also that I refilled ours for a good while and... I do not recommend refilling them. No, that was a pita. Well, for it, sure. it was a pain, but also a couple would end up leaking on me. But that felt really, really dangerous mm -hmm. to me. Um, there's a little kit you can buy to refill. Now, there is a, a company that makes refillable ones that are meant to be refilled. That's a whole different story. But, you know, get if you've got an RV, you've got propane on board, get that disconnect. It's, it's really, really convenient to use and to have. Also frees up space, less things you have to carry around with you. Many of us simply cannot travel these days without reliable internet service. Campground Wi-Fi can be spotty, and you want to make sure you have a safe connection, right? FMCA, the world's largest nonprofit RV club, their members can purchase discounted RV Wi-Fi plans. They partner with Sprint to provide internet hotspots, nicknamed the FMCA Tech Connect Plus plan. You get 3G and 4G LTE service, unlimited through Sprint. Sprint has teamed up with T-Mobile. They have now wider coverage areas, and it's truly unlimited with no throttling for only $49.99 per month with an active FMCA membership. No contract required. There's a one-time device rental fee of $39.99. Tech Connect Plus is a total package and also provides discounts on Dish TV satellite, CellBooster.us products, Wi-Fi Ranger products, and more. FMCA is running a membership promotion that's $60 for one year of membership or $50 for one year of renewal with the code one year. You can save 30% instantly. But hurry, this is only a limited time offer and ends July 6th at midnight. RV season is here, but the change in seasons also brings rain, mud, pollen, and other elements that you have to waste your time cleaning, or worse, that can end up damaging your vehicle. Whether you own a motorhome, a travel trailer, or a truck camper, EmpireCovers.com is here to help you protect all your vehicles against Mother Nature. EmpireCovers.com offers high-quality, affordable covers that are engineered to protect. Every cover comes with a free warranty to guarantee it remains durable over time. If you're not in need of a full cover, Empire's just launched a line of RV rooftop covers that keep the roof of your RV clean and protect it from UV rays. RV Miles listeners can receive free shipping plus an extra 15% off their entire order. Visit EmpireCovers.com or use the promo code RVMILES at checkout. All right, we are back and we did not have a brain teaser on last week's episode we because... Did not. We were, I know a lot of you saw that on YouTube and you really liked that nice low camp light light, but we were like really, really running out of light. It was about to be like scary dark. <laughs> yeah. And the bugs were everywhere. We should say too that we have made the decision. The brain teaser is being retired after this episode 199. So we are still doing one. This so episode. we're doing one this episode, but starting at 200 as we open up a new chapter of RV Miles. And we should say that episode 200 is going to be a new chapter on so many things here at RV Miles. And we're really, really excited. And we feel like after 200 wonderful brain teasers, 199 probably is more accurate. It's time to retire the brain teaser. So we didn't do one last week. We could have just not done I one know, this week. But, I know. But we got to do one. <laughs> I know. We were not thinking this through. You all know this. Episode 200 is getting planned probably like 24 hours before we have to record it. <laughs> like that's pretty standard for us. But we do have some really exciting things coming and some new changes to the show. And so one of the things we're doing is we are retiring the brain teaser. 
But, you know, wait till the end of the show you're, and you'll get your last one. You're going to get your last one. You might get two. You might see why we're retiring it. <laughs> All right. It's time to talk about Myrtle Beach. Our time in Myrtle Beach was uh, an absolute blast. It was pretty much a vacation for us. Mm -hmm. I know. All our life is a vacation, and it's fantastic. But we we did very little work that week, uh, which was which was great. But Myrtle Beach is uh, it is a mental and physical workout. Oh man, <laughs> I was so tired when we left. We needed the four days that we had at the campground after Myrtle Beach. Like we didn't leave. We just sat in that RV, worked, chilled, because we were all so mentally exhausted, but in a great way. And one of the reasons was because we were staying at such a fantastic state park, like right in the heart of Myrtle Beach. So it was consistently active. And we stayed at the Myrtle Beach State Park park. And what is so awesome about this state park is that you have immediate beach access. Yeah, it, it it's a it's a lovely campground itself, uh, but the park, the the ability to just walk right out onto the beach and a whole lot more. There's trails and a nature mm -hmm. center and stuff, but to to not have to like go pay for parking somewhere and to only be with the people that are really in that park yes. and not the thousands of people that might be on another beach at Myrtle Beach was wonderful. It was our first time at the Atlantic Ocean with the boys. Yeah, it was our very first time. And, you know, from our campsite, we were about a five minute walk to the beach. And I will say that the campsite we were staying at, I would absolutely recommend this one. We were at site 241, 241. It's a water and electric only site. Now the park does have full hookups and water and electric. We were in a water and electric only site, but we had so much privacy. And I will say that this is one of the things that's lacking at this campground is there are a lot of campsites. And a lot of times you're faced with those Y-shaped ones that we talked about with James Island. Sometimes it's just a big giant dirt pad with two sites stuck on there. And for whatever reason, and by for whatever reason, I mean the hours I spent like just looking at Google Earth and trying to figure out how, you know, where we could go because I knew we would need to film and I knew Jason would need a space to do that without invading others' campsites. This site was perfect. We were completely surrounded. We could hardly see our neighbors. Yeah, it was all vegetation all the way around us. It, it was, was great. They've got laundry on site, a wonderful camp store, great bath houses, playgrounds, a fishing pier. You've mentioned the trails. Like there's everything you need here for an entire vacation. You almost don't need to leave no, to go out into Myrtle Beach. But it is it is right right outside yes. of all of the action of Myrtle Beach. You and are on that strip as soon as you come out of the park. If you if you've not been to Myrtle Beach but you've been say you've been to Pigeon Forge or the Branson. Wisconsin Dells or Branson, it is like all of those things times 10. It, it, there are different districts that are all each on their own the size of like a downtown Branson. Yeah. It's incredible. There is there are so many mini golf places. There are, there must be like 30 mini golf places. There are so many go-kart tracks and uh all you can eat seafood buffets yes. and all the things that you you can imagine. You could all you could eat like every night of the week at a different seafood buffet. So we were really, really busy. Like Jason mentioned, this was almost vacation for us. So we were really, really busy that week. And here is just like, let's just run down some of the things that we did that week. And if you are following our Insta stories, then you probably saw it. But it was crazy. We went to the Hollywood Wax Museum Entertainment center and there we went through the Hollywood Wax Museum which the kids had never done anything like that before and I wasn't sure if they would enjoy it but everyone loved it it was awesome well the thing about the Hollywood Mac Wax Museum is that it's not just the wax figures which are cool on their own yeah but they all they do like they, they set up props so that you can like dress up and stand next to the actors and stuff like that. I got to stand um, next to Johnny Depp. <laughs> like I was in Pirates of the Caribbean. It was, I, it felt very cool to but me. But <laughs> then they also have, they, they had this 
laser maze thing that, that we was did crazy where you like mission P impossible it through like a, yes. a la lasers that you don't have you don't you want to run your body through them without yeah. touching it so it's a game so you select if you want it to be easy medium hard or expert and that's gonna like how the lasers are laid out depending on how you select and then you're timed and so you have to go in and you have to complete one mission where you hit one hand pad and then you have to go around the room and you have to hit the other one and then you have to hit the exit button. So we kept doing this and the museum the day we were there, there was no one there. So we were able to do this several times in a row individually. Yeah, we probably did it 25 times between all of yeah, us. Yeah, and we just kept like leveling up each time and then seeing if we could get into the top 10. And it was free, included with the ticket. Yeah, it was so much fun and i i was like finally i'm putting my yoga to good use <laughs> <laughs> they, it was so great they also have in the basement level uh two experiences that i think they're i'm not sure if they're both mirror mazes but the one, one we did was a mirror yeah maze. so the one we did is called hannah's maze of mirrors and then right next door they have outbreak Dread the Undead. Well, you can imagine that the Eppersons did not go to the zombie room. Like, nobody was having that. You probably would have gone, and I yeah. was like, you should go. But... I didn't want to make you all wait. Yeah. So, But the, the mirrors, the maze of mirrors was awesome. And somehow, I managed to get separated from you and the boys and got lost in... You guys were calling for me, but it was very, the whole thing It's was very weird. difficult to see where you are. Yeah, it was crazy because you go into it and you think, oh, you know, you're kind of walking through and you're following the story. And then you go into this tunnel that just totally throws your senses out of whack. And then you go into the maze of mirrors. And of course, I'm, you know, flashing back to the time we did something similar to that at the Nelson Atkins Art Museum, but it was all glass and our children kept running into the glass walls. Do you remember that? Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm thinking, you know, any second now, a child of mine is going to smack their face into one of these mirrors because no one's being slow. And then the next thing I know, you guys are all gone. And I'm just standing there. <laughs> lost so we did that that was awesome and then another thing we did we did the whole offerings from the myrtle beach family golf which they have four mini golf locations so the uppersons played mini golf four times yeah you can get like week. a you can get a, a like a fun pack that is i think it's like a hundred bucks for for 20 tickets or something like that yeah don't, i'm not don't quote sure. me on that but you can go to you get like uh, uh, it's it's a lot cheaper than than you know paying for them all individually we did all four and we started off the week like not the best and then i have to say by the time we got to our fourth one we were really good mini golfers i mean across the board and yeah. they have captain hook's adventure golf jurassic park jungle safari shipwreck island Shiprock Island was my favorite. I'm still annoyed that you beat me twice. Oh, uh, I beat you three times. I'm I thought you beat sure. me twice. No, no, we tied one time. Well, oh, we did. I beat you once. Yes. You beat me twice and we tied That's one right. time. That's right. I was 2 That's one, why one. it's really yeah. frustrating. I was 2 one, one So Jason and I had a running bet the whole time. And Listen. his was that he would have to give me like a massage. And not one of those massages that he gives me on my feet where it's like I'm looking at my phone and then every once in a while I pet you. Like, no, he had to legit, he had to like, that was, that's what would happen. And that I won twice. Abby is incredibly competitive. If, I don't know what you're talking about. That. And uh, <laughs> she gets angry when she loses and gloats no. when she wins. No, no, no. So also during this whole time, the two times I won, I was adding up the score. I don't know why he would give me the scorecard to add it up, but I would take the scorecard and I would add it up and both times. I tricked him into thinking he had won. Like I said, she is a sore winner. <laughs> and the look on his face was pure joy. And then I was like, oh, oh, no, I'm sorry. You actually lost. And he he got so mad the second time he lost that he threw down, <laughs> threw down the pencil, left all of us. Went and got the truck and was going to drive away and leave me there. He was so mad at me for tricking him once again. I was joking. I believe Henry no, has were... something to add to this. <laughs> what would what? you like to say, Henry? 
Well, that it was fun, and I had a bet too with Daddy. You had a, a Henry you had did. a bet with me as well. You did have a bet with Daddy. And you had you a lost very your bet. weird. No, it's still going on. Oh, still going on, Henry. I'm going to buy him some Bluetooth headphones if he can beat me. <laughs> minutes or golf. Jason, you made a $90 bet with him. Yeah, but like, I beat him. You said you would buy him some Beats by Dre. But I if... had already beaten him by 17 strokes with the first one. Now, Jason... the, by the fourth one, he got a lot closer. He's got a couple of hole-in-ones under his belt yeah. now. So let me say, too, the <laughs> night that Jason <laughs> threw a temper tantrum and stormed off at, after his loss, was he was actually, <laughs> you stormed off like in a funny way, not like you were seriously exactly. angry. Exactly. But he was on par to win, and I got a hole in one at the 18th, and then he was on he was on par to lose. I did get her back though at the track. The track is like a place where there are go kart tracks. They're of varying different degrees mm-hmm. of difficulty, and there are bumper boats. Yes, uh, the bumper boats were awesome. No, the bumper bo- boats were awesome listen. because listen, no, don't you well, first, listen? Okay, I'm first listening of all, first. first of all, let me say I. I destroyed Abby on the go-kart track. You didn't destroy me. I destroyed I you. I was winning for 50% of that drive. And then this but you woman. Lost. Yes, because this woman who was up front with me was going to let you pass her. And I was saying to her, no, no, ladies win. Ladies win. Don't let this guy pass you. I'm yelling this at her so, as we're driving. And she still lets you go by. And you cut me off. This is after I had fishtailed in order to keep you from passing me, which you're not so <laughs> and we, she still let you over we do that but then we also do the the bumper boats a couple times and the bumper boats have squ- like built-in squirt guns on them <laughs> oh, and abby and the kids ganged up on me <laughs> and drenched me i figured out a way to control to cheat the system to control. Because my button only <laughs> shot the gun like one speed. Hers, she could like do adjustable and aim at me. So, and she's just drenching me yeah, with so the thing. I just got right up on your boat and I would not let off of you. And I just kept firing and you were drenched. And this was even after you had managed to push me into the waterfall and get me a little wet. And then even after that, when we got off, you were your clothes. We could wring them out, and was, I, 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 I was, I couldn't stop laughing. We, I haven't laughed. For, it, it's like a six, seven, eight minute boat ride. It was so bad I, that oh we God. there. We have a towel below <laughs> the kids' feet in the truck, like so they don't get the floor dirty in the truck. And I went and got that towel that the kids feet had been on for months to dry myself off i was so wet it was so awesome it was so awesome and i know as we've been talking about this especially as we've been talking about those go-karts that over this video is going to be the video of us rolling in at the end of your face when i beat you go-karting was magical yes because jack was filming it as we came in and I didn't realize it and the look on my face behind Jason as he's got his hands up in the air like he's the winner I, you've all seen it already if you're watching this, here's so but... <laughs> here's the great thing about the track though this is a it's a great place there's a big arcade as well and you can buy you just buy a card and it has credits on it and you spend those however you want in the arcade or on the go go-karts and whatever they have uh, they have go-karts that are for little kids mm-hmm. that are real easy for the kids to drive on their own that go very slow. Um, and they're, they have a sort of a, a mid-range one and then the big ones. And everything there is electric powered. Yes. Which does not slow them down at all. But they are, they're not loud. They're not, you're not smelling the fumes mm-hmm. constantly. And it's just a great experience because, like, if there is if there is an accident or something, God forbid, they can press a button and it's and it slows everybody down. Uh, as you're coming into the end of the go kart track, it automatically slows you down to the slow speed. It's yeah. really it's really smart. Makes it really tough for those of us in second to try and get into first. Uh, after the red light has come on, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't see any red light. All right. <laughs> so uh, let's switch gears a little bit. Yeah. So we've talked about some really great family things that you can do. Well, let's talk about a few maybe grown-up 
things that sure. you can do. So one of those is you can go to a winery. You can go to Dublin Winery, which is also on the North Myrtle Beach side. Now, we all went as a family. You can absolutely go as a family. But they do a wine tasting. And here's what's so amazing about this wine tasting. Their deluxe wine tasting is only $10. Okay, it includes gourmet cheese dip, homemade crackers, and you get a glass of wine at the end, in addition to all the wines that you're going to taste. And this wine tasting lasts about half an hour. The one at the Biltmore, what was that, like 10, 15 Yeah, maybe 10, minutes. 15 minutes at yeah. max. And, and you got 10 different wines to try. Uh, yes, there were a lot of wines. Now, these are all sweet wines. They're made with muscatine grapes, so every one of them is going to have that really grape-forward taste to them. So if you're not a sweet wine drinker, this is probably not for you. I'm not a sweet wine drinker, but I still enjoyed it, especially their wine slushies, which I – that was my free drink at the end after and the wine tasting. they do have uh, – they have several wine slushies, and only one of them is non-alcoholic. Yes, so which the boys got. There is one that the kids can do. It. So yes. it was an experience we could bring the kids too and the kids had a little bit of fun there having a slushy yeah and they had outdoor music on the patio and there were snacks and you know they've got a little gift shop it was an absolutely lovely way to spend a couple of hours you know i would say go and do the wine tasting if you're you know with other grown-ups or if you're grown-ups and you have kids you can split that up we easily could have split it up we just were pressed for time that day so i did it and you hung with the boys but that was a ton of fun. And you can couple that with going over to Barefoot Landing, which was probably one of our favorite places in Myrtle Beach. We went back over there two, maybe even three times. We were there three times. times. Yeah. Yeah. So over there, there's a couple of restaurants that we loved. The first is Lucy Buffett's Lulu. Yeah. Or Lulu's. We went to a Lulu's also in the... The Orange Beach, Gulf Shores, Gulf Shores area. in Alabama. So this is this is Jimmy Buffett's sister, Lucy Buffett's restaurant, and fantastic brunch food, fantastic oh. dinner food. Sitting out on the on sort of a, an inlet and seeing the boats come in and out. Oh, it was really so cool. great. I mean, we had the best time and one of the best key lime pies I have had in so long. It was so good. And then you had the key lime pie. Yes. For dessert, I had bread pudding. Oh, right. I had bread pudding made with, not bread, with Krispy Kreme donuts. Yeah, that was on like a whole other level. <laughs> that was a whole other level. It was fantastic. And then there's also the Crooked Hammock Brewery is there. And that is a restaurant as well as brewery that you can get beers like a la carte. So they had this cute little like beer kiosk that was in a little little vintage RV. And you could go up and they had a bunch of draft beers. And, you know, you're able to get those and then walk around the, all the whole landing. Giant playground. And then there's a big lawn that's full of, like, outdoor games for kids to yes. play and stuff. And by kids, we mean kids of all ages. Yeah. Because yeah. we were playing we them, played, too. We played giant Jenga and Connect Jenga, Four. Jenga, Connect Four. There was um, Tic-Tac-Toe. There was Checkers. And you just, you know, they even, so in addition to being able to get, like, beer from the brewery and walk around they also have kind of like in the center a bar that you can go out to and you can get any kind of drink there yeah. i think you just got like a scotch uh, on the rocks yeah, or something, something like that, like but, that. but uh, yeah you could get mixed drinks out there yeah. there's like hammocks to hang out in and stuff like oh that. there's places to sit everywhere it's in a really beautiful location they have a trail that kind of goes all the way around the landing there's tons of shops there's sweet shops there's shops for you know getting we went into this goods. really cool shop that sells mead there yes and, that um, place was so cool and and also like lots of uh you know honey. It, it's honey mead and, yes. and then they also sold lots of different honey like orange blossom honey and, and it was called savannah bee and you can also do a mead tasting so yeah. they had a bar set up there that you could go and taste different types of mead it looked really cool we kind of popped in there towards the end of the day so we weren't able to stay as long as we wanted but that was probably one of my highlights of like the different stores that you could go yeah. into. So definitely, you know, make some time to go to like North Myrtle Beach and do all of these different things. Then you can go over and you can go to 
Broadway at the beach. And this is also very similar to Barefoot Landing in the sense that there's a bunch of stores, a bunch of restaurants, there's yeah, suites. There's... This place is more like uh, a little bit more of a party atmosphere, I think. Yeah, this is, I mean, this really feels more like a a, a boardwalk. I get like a very um, Coney Island feel off of yeah, it. Yeah, but I, I think like I would imagine on like weekend evenings. Like, oh, it's did, probably I, crazy. I probably wouldn't want to have kids in that area around that well, time. Well, I don't maybe. know. I mean, but yes, well, I can lots, see that. There's lots a, of 21 and older places. Yeah, there's a Dave and Buster's. There's a Hard Rock Cafe. There's, you know... Uh, there was a bar, Louis. That was. I haven't seen one of those in a while. Man, There's I hadn't seen one of those since college giant days. Giant Ferris wheels, Ron John sh- Surf Shop, lots of stuff like that. Um, but yeah. it's, it's a it's a big place. But we, uh, we had some awesome ice cream there. Some we did awesome at a place called Kilwins, which is like, yes. uh, it's not just ice cream. They sell like candies was... and chocolates and stuff yes. like that as well. But... I got a candy apple that was so good. You know when you go to like an ice cream shop and. They're making the waffle cones like they're fresh. And then you go and get one and you're like, well, the mm. cone they gave me isn't very fresh, even right. though they're making them in there. My cone was hot. <laughs> yeah, it was they, so good. A hot waffle cone with cold ice. It was wonderful. I think you got s'mores. I got s'mores too. ice cream. Yes. Yeah. I mean, so this is literally what we're talking about is about one sixteenth of what you can do in Myrtle Beach. And it was enough to fill a jam-packed week for us. And I'm talking seven nights. There are zip lines, <laughs> helicopter rides. Oh, let, yeah, hel- let's say, though, this is not... Oh, yes. This whole area is not a quiet area. So if you're looking no. to go to Myrtle Beach and have, like, your quiet camping experience at the Mm-mm. state park, the well, first of all, there's an Air Force base nearby, so there's military jets all the time. There's mm-hmm. an air, there's a commercial airport in Myrtle Beach, so there's commercial jets going in and out. But the real noise comes from the twenty dollar helicopter tours, which is great. You can spend twenty dollars and have a great helicopter tour. But they are just—I mean, we watched them. Actually, it was more wow. entertaining to watch them land and take off because they barely touch the ground. And somebody gets in, they go back off, they come back in, go back off. And it's a dance between the different helicopters on the landing pads and stuff. But they are constant and all day long helicopter tours Mm -hmm. over the beach. Yeah, which I think we talked about on a previous episode, too, which is why we I think the last time we filmed inside, we had to film inside or we were delayed getting an episode out because of that. So that was our time in Myrtle Beach. It was a fantastic experience. It's not for everybody. It's it's certainly if you're looking for that type of experience, it is the best experience. You know, like I would go there way before I would go to one of those other places we mentioned earlier. (laughs) Not that I hate those places either, but this they they do this thing very well. Yes, they do. They absolutely do. All right. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, we'll have our fresh tank black tank segment and the new and final brain teaser. Be right back. Electrical surge protection is one of the cheapest insurance policies you can provide for your RV, and the Power Watchdog Smart Surge Protector made by Hughes Autoformers beats the competition with field-replaceable surge modules. With other brands, when the surge protector takes a large surge or a spike, you have to throw it away. But the Power Watchdog, it can be brought back to life with one small, affordable part that you can replace yourself. They'll even give you a free surge module in the first two years. And now they have a limited lifetime warranty. Use the coupon code RVMILES, all one word, for 10% off your order at HughesAutoformers.com. That's RV Miles for 10% off at HughesAutoformers.com. Travel season is upon us, and along with all the fun travel planning, you will unfortunately have to plan for the not-so-fun stuff like an RV tire blowout. If you're driving down a major highway, you hear a loud explosion, you might have just had a high-speed blowout. Your nerves would be shot, and you try to remember what kind of tire protection you have. When you have an RV tire blowout or a flat, many tire and wheel programs deal with it through a reimbursement. The RVer has to source an appropriate tire, find a tow truck to take them to the shop, or find someone who can change it on the side of the road, and then pay for these services up front in the hopes of a timely reimbursement. CoachNet's Hazard Protect is sign and drive coverage. If you experience a blowout on your RV due to a road hazard, you only need to call CoachNet and then sign for services rendered. CoachNet takes care of the rest. That's what CoachNet and their vision of carefree RVing is all about. Simplicity for the customer in an extremely stressful situation. CoachNet Hazard Protect is the RVer's best option 
to handle an RV tire blowout. Hazard Protect can be purchased through a CoachNet participating dealer, or you can request a quote at cn.rvmiles.com. That's cn.rvmiles.com. It is time to check the level of our tanks. Abby, what is in your black tank this week? My black tank this week goes to people who park right next to you in a parking lot when you have parked yourself (laughs) way out in the back 40 and there's like 15 to 20 empty spaces all around you and then someone just has to roll up right next to you. And this happened to me. I went to the grocery store yesterday. I had had to go to a minute clinic because something was going on with my toe and I needed to go to the grocery store. And you know, the truck is is so big now that it doesn't really fit into one space. It generally ends up being kind of like a two space situation. Uh, I fit into one space. Just I fine. well, when Abby drives, I'm so concerned. Always I mean, about. It's not a dually. It's not a log bed. <laughs> well, I'm always. I maybe I'm just not judging it's it right. New, but anyway, and we don't want it to get well, hurt. Well, no, but also but, I'm always worried about the hitch sticking out too yeah, far. And you know, I know or, you are because this was your black tank a few weeks ago too. <laughs> Driving? No, what? people parking next to you. No, it was yeah, I not. Think it was. I don't I think, think so. it was. I think it was just me talking to you about it. All right, we're going to have to go back and look. But, <laughs> Maybe. But I'm with you. But I'm listen, with you. I'm with I, you. Even injured, I park way, way out there because I know that I am probably not going to do the best parking job. And I'll be darned if I'm not even out of the truck, Jason, and this guy comes up and parks behind me when he's got probably 15 other spaces to choose from and then gives me a dirty look. Like, lady, you going to move this truck forward? And I was like, no, bye. And like walked on because I was like, I'm injured and I'm already out of this truck. And then I come back out and this woman has parked on the other side next to me. And she's so close. She can't get her door open. And there's all these empty spaces. And I'm just thinking, why? There's not safety in numbers out here. Okay. Find spread out, spread out people. But everyone was so angry at me for where I had parked. And I had specifically parked so far away. And I was just like, this is, I'm not here for this today. This is not the day. This is such a personal beef of mine. No, I think a lot of people, when you, when you park in the back, you don't want people parking next to you. I get it. You know, or you just know you're not, you know, I'm not the best at judging the space of where this truck is in relationship to a parking spot. So I park far away. So I'm not taking up a closer spot for somebody I do else. wish, I wish they would put sensors on the front of the truck and not just because we yes. have the, the parking sensors on the back that tell us, you know, when we're getting near something. But we also have a backup camera so we can see it. So I, just I wish we had look. the sensors on the front so we can, you know, just hobbling, know to stop. hobbling myself to the Kroger. All right. And I was just like, people, stop parking next to me. What's in your fresh tank this week? All right. So my fresh tank goes to Ranger Gandalf Traley II working title because we are going to share in episode 200 next week the next chapter for our family and for RV Miles as we continue to travel. And on episode 100... We introduced our Heartland Pioneer QB300, so it only felt right to, at episode 200, do the same with this next chapter. But before we do that, without getting too emotional, I just want to acknowledge this amazing home that was exactly... You know, I, we're only going to be in this thing for for like eight more days. I just realized yeah, that. Yeah, I was like crying wow. on the way home from McAllister's today because I was thinking about it, but... You know, it's, and I wasn't like crying, crying and driving. Don't, I don't, don't at me at this. I had a tear, okay? (laughs) Like I was still safely driving. But I was thinking about it that, you know, this trailer was and is this Heartland Pioneer QB300 has been the most amazing home. It was the exact floor plan we needed and the exact price range that we needed to feel comfortable in to do this. And it was here for us in two of the most challenging chapters of our travel life. Like just looking at, I can't look at this couch behind us without so much sense memory of seeing you sitting there after you came home from the hospital. You know, we were only in this a few weeks before you got sick. And then we were only back in it for a few weeks before COVID hit. 
And through all of that, through all those dark, uncertain days, this has been our home. And it's been such an amazing home. And I, I cannot usher in this next chapter without acknowledging just how thankful I am that Heartland made this Pioneer QV300 and that it came into our lives. And I'm going to miss it. I'm not sad that the next chapter is starting, but I am I really love this place. Well, now <laughs> I feel really bad about what my black tank is. <laughs> I know. What but you're... I am a little annoyed. <laughs> Look, no, and I'll say it because you're going into your black tank. Even... Even with the broken microwave <laughs> and all of the water issues, we have listened with our hearts just hurting for other people as they have dealt with tremendous RV obstacles in their home. And we have been so very blessed to never have anything that we couldn't take care of ourselves or that could would keep us from being able to go to point A to point B. Because yeah. we've been on the other side of that with Bussy. Yeah. Stuck where we could not yeah. go forward. Yeah. And Ranger Gandalf Traley II, working title, never kept us. <laughs> that name <laughs> never changed. But it never kept us from being able to live our lives. And inside here as well are just the memories of, you know, 2020 saw things happen for our business and into 2021 that I never dreamed would happen for us. And they all, they all happened in here, you it's know, true. it's so it's a really bittersweet, but exciting time. And I felt like I couldn't, I couldn't move into episode 200 without just loving on this RV a little bit first. All right. All right. What's in your black tank? Go for it. Well, <laughs> <laughs> now, now you're going to, now you're going to throw some shade at well, no, the, the trailer. I, I, I will. I'm going to throw some shade at high point, <laughs> high point microwaves. Cause it's, we are not at a high point with it right now. We are, we are two years into ownership of this RV and we are, like I said, we are probably only have about eight more days in it. We're going to be spending some time with bouncing between family for a little bit before we pick up the new rig. And we've got a prep. We've got a lot of prep to do, yes. too. So we've got to get out of it. And eight days away from our last day in this, our microwave <laughs> has died on us. It did. It was like, you can make dinner last night, but that's the last dinner I'm it will making. Not, you cannot <laughs> plug it. If you plug it in, oh. it will trip the breaker. Just plugged in, not running. It will trip the breaker, yeah. plugged in, and spark. So I don't know what's going on with it, but yeah. And look, when you're <laughs> stumped by something electrical, that's when I yeah, know I mean, it's I, bad because you were like, huh? no, I mean, I, you know, <laughs> like, it's it's I definitely don't... in the microwave because yeah, no. we we have used the outlet it's plugged into to just fine. It's in. Oh, well, the... you're bringing in extension cords yeah. and plugging things in to test, and you went to plug the microwave in, and it sparked. And I looked at you, and I was like, I, that doesn't seem. That's not that right. That doesn't look <laughs> that's, that's good. Not good. Let's not do that again. Um, and I was like, should I go grab a fire extinguisher? What is going on here? So yeah, um, it's, it's the irony is not lost <laughs> that one week before we're done, that microwave is like, mm -mm, mm -hmm. I'm done. Mm -hmm. So what you can do. <laughs> All right. What is in your fresh tank this week? Uh, my fresh tank is KOAs. We, I, we have not spent a ton of time in our camping lives over the entirety of it in a lot of commercial campgrounds. We've been doing it more and more, uh, especially doing some monthly stays during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, but in the East, uh, it, it often seems convenient to go to some of these commercial places, especially on like travel periods near well, highways yeah. and yes. stuff. And uh, we have stayed at a couple KOAs the last two places we've stayed at, including this. This is our third KOA in a row. This this On Dayton this, KOA, yeah. uh, which uh, have been all fantastic. Now, KOA is a, it, it is a sort of a marketing organization. It, you know, they, they are franchises by different owners across the country. So we have been at some not so great KOAs before and some great ones. And it really depends on the ownership. But there is something about like what KOA does where they, they, do expect a certain level from their individual owners and they do like you know lots of things that other campgrounds 
just can't do. Like they have national online training programs mm -hmm. for employees to like watch videos and train and stuff like that. And they just, they just do such a fantastic job of this campground with like the trash pickup and like keeping everything clean, pristine bathhouses, pool maintenance and the activities we played bingo mm -hmm. last night and it was a blast uh the they have this ice i mentioned at the beginning of the show you can buy ice cream here you can buy pizzas here the pizzas are they're kind of expensive but you you can put as many toppings as you want with no additional charge oh, that's nice. the ice cream is three bucks and they, it's like a it's like a pint of ice cream it's an absurd amount of ice cream. i know i missed all the fun last night <laughs> Abby, I was, she couldn't walk around. i couldn't walk around i had to stay home with my foot elevated but you know i'll say too they have been sending regular text messages i've been getting regular text messages which we really appreciate we've talked about that in the past with other places where we've been able to check in and then find out what's going on via text. We don't work with KOA. We have, you, this is not us, you know, doing any sort of uh, affiliate with KOA. But, you know, again, when you were sick, that KOA that we stayed at, the people at that KOA in Minot, North Dakota, were so kind and so helpful and so concerned about you. Yeah. And I felt like we, we had a place that I could feel safe being at, secure being at. And I had a place where I felt like we were supported in what we needed in order to facilitate your care and, and get us back on the road. So just that environment alone, whether that is just the people that owned that Minot or that is fostered inside the KOA community as a whole, whatever that is, keep doing it because I will always say if anyone asks where to go in Minot, you go that Minot KOA and you please tell them we sent you and tell them thank you. Yeah. All right. Let's wrap this episode up with a brain teaser. Okay. The last so, one. So there's no, we're doing two. Oh, we're doing we're two. We're doing two because we're doing the one that you think should be the way the brain teaser goes out. And we're doing the one that I think should be the way it, it, the brain teaser except goes out. I didn't pick either of these. No, you, you liked this, this one, the, the eternity one. That was the one that you wanted to pick over my other one. So we're going to put that. I don't even in. remember hearing this. Yes, you do. I oh probably was just nodding at you. you probably. <laughs> All right. Probably. What All right. has. Here's, a... here's Jason's. The top no. one? No, no, no. Do yours first. Well, they're in a different order than you want them said. Yes. The beginning of eternity, the end of time and space, the beginning of every end and the end of every place. We've done this one before. No, I, we haven't. I guarantee you we've done this one before. No way. Okay. <laughs> then if we've done this one, <laughs> this is why we're retiring this. If we've done this one before, then you get a freebie. You know what it is. This one that's coming up next, I guarantee you, we have not done before. Okay. Okay. Go for it. What has a bottom at its top? And I would never have picked that one because it's so vague. But the answer is pretty good, I will I will admit. So yep. we'll have that. I picked it for the boys. And a whole lot more on next week's episode of the <laughs> RV Miles podcast. <laughs> yes, we will. And hey, if you are enjoying RV Miles, we hope you'll come back next week for episode 200, the big 200 episode. And of course, we hope you will also go over to Apple Podcast and leave RV Miles a five-star review. Your review is putting us in front of a whole new generation of listeners and it is skyrocketing us on the charts so thank you so very much for everyone who is doing that please come over and connect with us on instagram facebook youtube or tiktok and of course jason and i can always be found in the rv miles facebook group which just ticked over ten thousand members and yet it is still such a nice little tiny close-knit community it's delightful all right, until next week. Thank you again to Ranger Gandalf Traley, the second working title for so many episodes filmed inside this rig. And until next week, be safe, be well, and keep logging those RV miles. Bye, everybody. Bye.